Hello, this is Reza Rad from Red Acad. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is Power BI, Data Mart, Data Flow, and Data Set. What is their differences? Which one you should use in your architecture? Um, which one is replacing the other one? If it is, let's find out the answer to all of these questions. <music> Uh, to start learning about this, first let's have a quick introduction of each of these components. So first of all is uh, is data flow. So what is a data flow? A data flow is a power query transformation uh, in the cloud, uh, which is not dependent on Power BI. Uh, that happens um, in the cloud basically in Power BI service or Power Platform service. Uh, it loads data from, um, it extracts data from different sources. It does some Power Query transformations on it and then load it into a destination. At the time of recording this video, the two destination options are Azure Data Lake Storage and Dataverse. Um, now I have a whole separate video about data flow, so make sure to go check that out. The links are down in the description below. Uh, so that is the data flow. What is a data set? A data set in Power BI Desktop is not that much visible. Behind the scene, it is a place that all the data is stored. Uh, it is in memory storage. It has all the connections to the data sources, the actual data itself, the tables. Their cell, their data in the, each cell, uh, the relationship between tables, calculations such as DAX expressions, measures, um, and uh, some of the field formatting levels. All of that happens in an object called dataset. Dataset is based on SQL Server Analysis Services tabular engine uh, model, and the dataset is created on that. Uh, while you are working in Power BI Desktop, this is hosted in. Uh, in an on-premises instance of analysis services in your machine. When you publish it in the website, then you'll see the data set separately, which is hosted in Power BI service. Uh, now, what is a data mart? Data mart is uh, the newest addition in these components, recently announced in Microsoft Build. This is where um, it's more like a container that includes data flow and data set. These are combined together. This is where these two components are combined, but it's not just that, it is also bringing uh, SQL Server storage, Azure SQL Database storage, which you can keep your data, you can call it Data Warehouse, you can call it Data Mart, whatever you call it, with a unified uh, platform um, or UI to, um, to build all of these in one place instead of like managing each separately. So these are the three different things, uh, different components, and I explained each of these separately in a video, so I encourage you to go and check out those videos for more details. But this video is about what is their differences. Now to understand those differences, first we have to understand the um, like the difference between two of them, which is data flow and data set, which I'm going to talk about it. But why the difference of these three is important? One of the important uh, questions about this that I get is that, well, Reza, you are talking about data flow, data set, data mart, and you are saying all of these are storing the data. So why we have so many different components that are storing the data? That is correct. All of these are storing data differently. Uh, and that is what I'm going to talk about. What is their differences and why we should use each of these. So first let's talk about the data flow and data set, and then we'll add data mart into that. Data flow is the power query component among all of these three. Uh, data flow is where we have data transformation using Power Query. We cannot have any DAX in data flow. We cannot have a relationship in terms of like the both directional relationship or things like that that affect the, uh, the um, reporting. There, there can be relationship in Power BI in data flow entities, but it's not that relationship that you have in Power BI. So data flow mainly is the replacement of your Power Query component. This is where you do your data transformation. Another important thing about data flow is that data flow is not just limited to Power BI. You can go to Power Platform Portal inside Power Apps and create a data flow. That is also a data flow. Now there might be a few differences between that data flow you create over there and the data flow you create in Power BI. We have standard versus analytical data flows. Uh, we can have um, like different storage options. As I said, that is more details in the data flow video. You can go and check it out. 
But what I'm saying is that you can use data flow, you can create and use data flow outside of Power BI environment. You don't need to have a BI solution to go and use data flow. You might have some um, source applications which you want to just integrate their data into a place and other applications just use it without needing any BI or reporting or dashboard solution at all. And that would work. Dataflow can, can do that for you, right? It's not just for Power BI. If you use Dataflow inside Power BI, normally you are using it for data analysis, uh, but outside of Power BI is also possible. That is one of the key differences of Dataflow. Uh, data set, on the other hand side, is replacement of DAX, relationships, calculations, uh, hierarchies you create inside your model, field level formatting, such as saying this column has to be uh, sorted by another column, hiding the columns, uh, things such as formatting every cell, um, of course the relationship like both directional, one to many, many to many, all those kind of features, the DAX measures, calculated tables, calculated columns, all of these are part of your, uh, your model. When you want to reuse that, we create a data set for that so that we can reuse it in other places. By default, Power BI creates a data set and a report together. So you have always like one data set per report, but this data set can be used in other reports. That is one of the main benefits of a data set that you can reuse it in multiple places. Uh, one of the questions that I get often is that, um, well, data set seems to be storing data again. What is the point of that? If I already have a data warehouse in Azure SQL database, in Synapse, in, in any other places, uh, what is the point of using um, data set? Can I, can't I just use direct query from Power BI report to my data source, you can, but I wouldn't recommend that. Power BI dataset comes with its own storage option, which is an in-memory storage. This in-memory storage makes Power BI mm, so fast because everything is in, uh, everything is loaded into the memory, querying the data when you interact with the report, everything is super fast because everything is in memory. When you use direct query or other methods, you wouldn't get that performance. Now you can combine direct query with import data, Power BI data set. There are a lot of articles and videos I explained about that. But the importance of a data set here is that it's not just another storage. It is a storage that gives you uh, the best performance. In addition to that, you also have the calculation engine of DAX, which you can write your formulas and calculations on top of it. So data flow, in, if we talk about the um, like architecture of Power BI as a three layer architecture, again, I explained that in another video, which has an ETL layer, data modeling layer, and a visualization layer, data flow is like your ETL layer. This is where you get data from the source, transform it using Power Query transformations, loads it, load it into Azure Data Lake storage or Dataverse. Uh, and then the data set is the modeling layer. This is where we define relationships, calculations, um, field level formatting, hierarchies, anything like that. And then visualizations happens on top of that. So there are some really important differences between these two. Data set is the replacement of the modeling versus data flow is the replacement of the ETL and Power Query. Uh, you still need these two different layers. You cannot say I would use data set, I would not use data flow, or I would use data flow, I would not use data set. These are two separate layers. Normally they work together instead of against each other. For example, data flow gets data from the source. If we, took, if we take a look at that architecture again, data flow gets the data from the source, transform it and feeds that into the data set. Then data set gets it, adds some more calculations on top of it, and then feeds that into a report. So they work actually together rather than uh, instead of each other. Um, the developer who works with a data set needs to have DAX knowledge, relationship knowledge, versus the developer who builds the data flow needs to have Power Query knowledge. That, that person might have DAX knowledge as well, but that is not critical in his or her job. It is important that uh, this person knows Power Query transformation, some M scripting. Um, the mm, situations that we use data flow for normally is when we want to reuse a table in multiple uh, 
places in multiple Power BI models versus situations that we create Power BI datasets is where we want to reuse a calculation, a part of modeling in multiple reports or visualizations. So there are a lot of other differences as well. Um, make sure to check out the link to the blog down below. Now uh, we talk about data flow, talk about data set, but where is data mart uh, in between all of these? So data mart, as I mentioned, is more like a container rather than just one single object. It's a container that includes data flow, data set, and in between those also an Azure SQL database. So what Data Mart is doing is actually getting data from sources, applying data transformations using Power Query Online inside data flow. It feeds that data into an Azure data, uh, Azure SQL database. So that is more like data warehouse. Some people call it Data Mart. It doesn't really matter what you call that layer in the middle. It's your data storage. It's where you store your star schema, dimension table, fact tables, and then data set on top of that. Data Mart comes with a unified uh, platform that you go and build all of these together. So um, all of that helps in the architecture we've been talking about where we have data flow separately and data set separately. So Data Mart is kind of using benefits of both of those together. You learn that data flow is replacing the ETL component, data set is replacing you, is acting like your data model component. So data mart is actually kind of having them all in one place, which makes your architecture even better. So you have your ETL layer, your data modeling layer, and you have your data warehouse in the middle of it as well. You may call it data mart. As well. Now, uh, the main question that I get in from everyone who listen to videos about Data Mart and articles about Data Mart, uh, they ask that, is Data Mart going to replace these components? Like the first question, is data flow getting replaced by Data Mart? That is one of the most uh, common questions that I uh, get. Uh, the answer is no, definitely not. Um, I'll give you two examples. One example is what I mentioned earlier in this video that data flow is not just for Power BI. You may not really build a BI application. You may have a data integration solution that you want to build. You don't have to do anything with Power BI. You are just building a data flow to integrate data from the source systems. You may do that totally outside of Power BI or you may use Power BI to do that, but you don't really need to build a whole data mart. You don't want to use data set because you are not building Power BI reports on it. You just want to use data flow Power Query online. That is an example of using data flow just by itself. Another example, you may use a, uh, you may use a data um, mart and let's say you have created the data mart, but still in order to feed data into that data mart, instead of having just one data flow that gets data and transform it and do everything, you may realize that you need to implement staging data flows, transformation data flows, like multiple layers of data flows, which I explained it in another video that you can have multiple layers of data flows that helps in data source isolation, in uh, minimum effort required in the future. If, for example, the data source changes from SQL to Oracle to anything else, your transformation data flows can be enhanced and reuse some of other transformations. Uh, there, is, there are a lot of benefits in doing that. So even if you use Data Mart, you may still use Dataflow as a component of its own separately, which I explained that in a video that I have created before this about uh, Power BI architecture. Uh, what about dataset? Is dataset getting replaced by Data Mart? Uh, the answer to that is also no, because uh, you can use Power BI dataset without using other components. Let's say, uh, we are working in an enterprise environment um, that um, you don't really use data flow for data transformation. There are other tools and services you are using, Azure Data Factory, for example, SSIS, or non-Microsoft tools and services. You load data into a data warehouse, which might be Azure Synapse or any other data warehouses, and you still want to present that into a dashboard or report. So you build a Power BI data set on top of it. You may not need a whole data mart, you just use a Power BI dataset. That is an example of using that. Another example is that you have the data mart, but you created the data mart and then your self-service users, your business analysts, they want to build their own 
version of data sets on top of it, which gets data from the data set related to your data mart, but also add their own data and do some calculation, which they can do that using chain data set, which is direct query to the Power BI data set. So there are examples of using that as well, where you create chain data set on top of a data mart. So definitely data mart is not replacing data set, is not replacing data flow. They are still there. Now, the million dollar question is that which one should I use? Data mart, data flow, data set. Uh, I would say this is all depends on uh, what you want to implement, what is your scenario, what is your use case. Uh, I'll give you an example. Let's say um, James is a BI developer in a company. He goes and build a whole new BI solution. That BI solution should include data transformation, getting data from the source, doing data transformation, um, adding some calculations on top of it, visualizing, so all these different layers. So he decides to do that using Power BI Data Marts because Power BI Data Marts gives him a multi-layer application with the data flow, with the Azure SQL database, with the um, Power BI dataset and the reporting, and it works perfectly fine. After a while, he realized that, well, the data transformation side of it is getting quite heavy. He's, um, he's duplicating part of the transformations where he should be reusing it. So he realized that he might be able to get better outcome in the data flow side if he implements a multi-layer data flow architecture where he does have um, staging data flow as well as transformation data flows. It might be multiple layers of transformation data flow. So he adds that into this architecture and it works perfectly fine. James also have some other colleagues and um, those are business analysts and they want to use this model that James built, this data set, which is part of the data mart that James built, but they want to add their own data into that, like part of the data that comes from SharePoint, from Google Analytics. They want to combine that, add some more calculations on, the, on top of that. So they really need to create like a chained data set on top of that. So as you see in this example, I told you it's like three different components. They all working together, data mart, data flow, and data set. They are not replacing each other. They are working together. Now you may have a requirement that only requires one of these or all of these. It's all depends on the situation that you want to use. It is important to understand what if what each component is doing so that you learn how to use it. As I mentioned, make sure that you go and check out the videos uh, individually for data mart, data flow and data set down in the description below. If you have any comments or feedback, let me know. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI. Thank you.